Hi everyone, Tom here from Frontend Beginners, and in this video we'll look at how to make the first item in a flex container full width. For this example, I've set up a flex container that's 1000 pixels wide and given it a grey background. Inside it, I've created three flex items, each with an initial width of 200 pixels. To make the first item in our parent flex container full width, we first need to target that specific item. To do this, you could give the first item a unique ID, a unique class, or target it using a CSS pseudo selector. The way you choose to select the item doesn't really matter, as long as you can target it individually without affecting the other flex items. In this video, I'm using the nth of type pseudo selector with a value of 1 to target the first div with a class of flex item. So over here in the HTML, I have my parent flex container with a class of container, inside which are my three child flex items that each have a class of flex item. So by targeting the class flex item with the nth of type pseudo selector and a value of one, I'm targeting this first element here. Now that we've targeted the first item, let's make it full width. To do this, we'll give it a width value of 100%. This will make our first flex item the same width as its parent container, or in other words, full width. If we look at this in the browser, we'll see that this hasn't quite worked. This is because our other two flex items are getting in the way, preventing our first item from expanding to the full 100% width of its parent container. To overcome this, we need to push our second and third flex items down onto the next row, making space for the first item to fill the width of the top row. By default, when creating a flex container, the CSS Flexbox flex wrap property is set to no wrap. This means that all of our child flex items remain on a single line or row and are not able to wrap down onto the following row. By giving our parent flex container a flex wrap value of wrap, we override this default behavior, allowing items to break onto additional rows as necessary. If we look in the browser now, we'll see that our first flex item has increased in width to 100% of the parent container, and the other flex items have wrapped down below it onto the next row. Now that our first item is full width, we can adjust the size or position of our other two flex items without affecting the first item. For example, if we wanted items 2 and 3 to be positioned in the centre of the container rather than over here to the left, we could apply justify content center to our parent flex container. Because our first item is full width, its position along the main axis cannot be changed. It has no room to move either left or right, and so it won't be affected by justify content. It's only the position of our other flex items that will change. Likewise, we could change this to any of the other justify content values, such as space between, and again, only the second and third items will be affected. If we wanted to increase the size of these other two flex items so that they fill the width of the second row, the simplest method would be to apply a flex grow value of 1 to them both. We can either do this by targeting both of these elements individually, or we can simply apply the property to all of our flex items. So let's delete this justify content property, and we'll target all of our flex items, so every element with a class of flex item and give them all a flex grow value of 1. Because the first item 
is already full width, it can't be affected by the flex grow property. It has no room to grow. Only the other flex items will be affected and they'll both increase in size to fill the width of the second row. I think that just about covers the basics of how to make the first flex item full width inside its parent container. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.